What I'm going to show you now is a piece of software that I've been working on that can turn any MIDI controller like this one into something much smarter. And by MIDI controller like this one, I mean technically any MIDI controller that you can send values back to so it will display them on the unit. So I can with MIDI send a value here and it will display that on the encoder or maybe you got something with motorized faders and it will set the fader to that value uh, or the launch pad even. You know, you can uh, send values to that and it will light up the appropriate field or the appropriate button. Um, it will work with any DAW. I'm doing this now with Ableton Live. Now with everything I'm going to show you, there's nothing that I've done to the firmware of this thing or there's no Max for Live magic going on. This is basically very vanilla Ableton Live set that I'm working with. It's all the software that sits between the controller and your DAW. That could be Ableton Live, that could be Bidwig, that could be anything else. Could even be like some other kind of software. So let's get briefly into my, my layout here, which is I've got eight tracks. I've got a bass synth, I've got three other synths, I've got two sample-based synths, I've got the drum track, which we are listening to right now, and the vocal track, which I'm speaking through. And on each of these, I've got eight effects also, like from left to right, filters, uh, compressor, distortion, modulation, like chorus, and, and some more stuff, which we'll get into. And uh, the first feature that I wanted is, instead of having to go like this, like switching through the pages and getting lost and uh, have to, having to remember numbers, I wanted to be able to just say, hey, I want to go to the track, uh, to the, let's say, drum track. So I select the drum track, which is right here. You see a few things have changed here because I've dialed in some stuff previously. And uh, now I've got all my eight effects available to me. So let's start with a little bit of filtering. So let me turn the filter on. I can filter some stuff here. So for each effect I got the uh, the activator. For some it's just a toggle turning it on. Sometimes it's a momentary. Oh, this, this is a little weird. No. Yeah, this is better. Um, and uh, it doesn't stop at these three dials. So imagine this unit had, instead of three rows of dials, it had six. Well, I can change to the other three by Pressing this button, you see, again, things have changed. We're still on a drum track, we still got the same effects, but now this button, instead of setting the cutoff frequency, it sets the resonance. That's a little harsh. And I can do that with any kind of effect. So, uh, I don't know, this one, I believe, this is a delay. I can manipulate all this kind of stuff. So let me add a uh, simple bass line to this. Let me switch to the bass track and also start by like applying a basic filter to that. And again I could do the exact same thing. Now let's say I want to play with both filters at the same time. Well they are on different tracks, what do I do? I go back to my initial view by just clicking the same track again. Now I'm in my initial view. And by the way, everything I'm showing you is just my configuration. Like this is all completely modular. All the functionality I'm showing you, you can map any dial or any button to any kind of these functions that I'm showing you. So I'm now back in my initial view. And instead of going track first, I can go effects first. So let me, let me select the filter, which as you remember is always on the very left. And now you can see all the tracks that have the filter enabled right now. Uh, even the pad that I'm not even playing. So let me turn that off. So you can hear. I can now control both filters on both drums and uh, bass at the same time. That is pretty nice. Um, yeah, I can select any other kind of effect. Let's say the delay. Uh, or let's say this, this uh, repeater effect. Uh, okay, this is set up weirdly right now. I uh, <laughs> should have checked how it's set up before. Okay, let's let's do the delay instead. Well, yeah, you can go track first, effects first, and again, this is just my configuration. You can build. Imagine building a website with like different subpages, and you can have the same elements on all the subpages, but like different configurations of them. You, you can go wild with this. You can have buttons do a toggle mode. You can have them blink. You can do anything you want with this. 
it's basically running a virtual controller like this and like sending it values and this is the reason why it's important that your controller whatever it is can uh, show you those values again now let me add a melody to this let me go to that track dial in a little bit of chorus And uh, again, filters. Filters are always nice. Now maybe I want to like fade that in and out every once in a while using that filter, but I don't want to always go back to this page. Like I have to think about, do I have to select the track first? Am I in, in effects view? Or am I like on a completely different page right now? Well, let me map this up here to a macro. Just by tapping it, it takes on the value of whatever I've like manipulated last. And as you can see, it's manipulating both at the same time. Or rather, both are manipulating the same target value. And now I can go again back to my drums, let's say. Add a little bit of smear and still play around with the other dial. Let's add this to our macros as well. And now I'm back on my initial view, like these buttons currently they don't do anything, just to show you like this is nothing and uh, still I got all my controls up here that I just mapped. And I haven't even touched Ableton Live in minutes, I don't know. And the last little thing I want to show you, so let's, uh, I just think, let's add a little pad to this, let me switch to that track first and then uh, launch the clip. And please don't expect this to sound cool or anything. This is really just a, a demonstration. Um, let's say I want this filter here. Again, I like filters. Who doesn't like filters? I want this to sweep up and down all the time. Like I can, of course, I can map it to another macro and I keep dialing this up and down while I'm doing other stuff, but that's kind of bothersome. And uh, again, no firmware, no Ableton Live. I, uh, I could now drag in like an LFO in Ableton Live and map it to the target, but then I can't manipulate it here anymore. I'd rather have an LFO right on this thing. So let me hold down this button. And now I can dial in some modulation on anything that I've got right here. So let me dial in some modulation on that filter, some positive modulation. And as you can see, it's now moving all by itself. And even the, uh, the macro that I've set up here, even that thing moves. And I can still adjust like the center point can add the same thing to any other effect. Let me let me go back to my drum track. I've got this nice smear thing happening here. Let me add some uh, negative modulation. And now it's like moving the opposite direction of this thing. And it's debatable if this sounds good or not, but as I said, this is just about the functionality. Um, you can basically add any kind of modulation that you want. You just have to program it into this thing, which is, isn't that hard actually. So let me turn all of this crap off again. Uh, let me dial the modulation back. Oh, let just turn off the effects. Oh, I just loaded a snapshot. This is a functionality I've been working on, like dialing in snapshots, where I can say, this is slot number 10, let me save whatever configuration I have, and then later I can go back to it and load it again, right on the unit. So you could set up like a, a preset of the whole set for, let's say, for the verse or the chorus, and uh, just recall them at any time you want. Again, I haven't touched Ableton, I haven't done anything in Max for Life, I haven't done anything to the firmware. This is a software that sits between the controller and your DAW, and then you can make things more intelligent than they actually are. Let me turn all this off. So yeah, if you're interested in this, um, I'm still working on it. Uh, as you can see, it's it's kind of functional already, and I'm also already using it to make music. Uh, however, it's kind of set up for the way I've set up my things. So uh, what I want to do next is um, work on this thing to make it more usable for anyone to just like download something and run it and have it work. Right now, you gotta fiddle around with it a little bit. Um, if you want to play with it, play around with it right now and uh, you know some stuff about Python, which I've programmed this in, uh, you can head to the GitHub in the, in the description of this video. 
uh, I'll add some more documentation as time goes by. Uh, if you want to support the development, like maybe you say, oh, I can't program, but I want you to go further with this. This sounds really useful. Uh, if you want to support me in any way, uh, just head to my Bandcamp. It's also in the description. I don't know, drop a few bucks for the music. You don't even have to listen to the music if you don't like it. Just, as I said, like, uh, if you want to support this in any kind of way, um, because right now, as I said, it works for my setup, but I kind of want to make it work for everyone. And uh, I only have this controller right now set up, but uh, it should be kind of trivial to set up something like the BCF2000, which basically instead of all these dials has motorized faders. It should definitely be possible with a launch pad, although then you got to figure out like the color coding first. But um, as I said, it's very modular and you can add functionality to anything you want. You can use my uh, my profile as a as a jump off point for to make your own configuration. And I hope this is going to be useful for a lot of people and uh, make your BCR more valuable than it already is because I I really think this is one of the best controllers available. However, as I stated in the beginning, it is pretty dumb by itself, but uh let's let's make these things smarter, right? <laughs>